guys, it's Laurie of Laurie Sewing. And today is Saturday, sometime in September. We'll see what the date is, 25th of 2021. And if you've been following me, you know that Jumper Challenge, I've drawn this uh, dark on here is me drawing the dress that I'm going to make from this pattern. This is what the bodice actually looks like. This is what I'm going to make as the bodice for this skirt part of the dress. I've already done the skirt part um, here. There's a lot of it. I'm making mine all the way down to the ground and I may add the ruffle. I hope I can. Um, additionally, I had to order a pattern top to attach. So I'm gonna make the top and attach it to the skirt. We'll see how that goes. It's something I've kind of always wanted to do. It's been one of those, you can't do that kind of thoughts in my head, but I'm going to give it a go. I finally decided why not? And if it works, oh wow, I have just opened up a whole new avenue to use my patterns. But this is the pattern that I ordered off of an Etsy shop. Um, it was, in Silverton, Oregon, Brenda Quayley is the person's name. Let's see if she put a little receipt in. They usually do. Here we go. There is the pad. Look how nicely wrapped. Thank you, Brenda. This is It's So Vintage. That is her little shop name right there. Yeah, very nice, lovely. Hmm. Okay, so this pattern is, I believe, I think it's vintage. And when I say vintage, I mean it was printed a while ago. Was it 19? Let's see. Oh, 2006. Okay, and it is factory folded, uncut. And my thought was this version right here. And the reason I think I want to do this one, I'm probably going to avoid using the cuff and I'm going to add elastic. I, I don't know, we'll see. I may change my mind on that. But the reason I like this one is it's long. Now there is a split, it has, I think each version has that split um, at the side right there. You can kind of see this is the back views. And there is a little bit, you can see where there might be a little split and all of the versions um, offer it in that way. But this is the collar that I envisioned when I decided I was going to, going to do this. I did not want a big traditional collar. I just wanted a little round stand-up type collar. And I wanted something that buttoned in the front, and that works. And I wanted something with long sleeves, and that works. And I wanted something long enough that I could take the skirt I have. I'm doing view A but of course I'm making it very long, obviously. Uh, view B and view C both have a little pointed hem right there. And view A has the straighter version. And that is the one that I cut out. Um, but it has this slant here because these are cut these two, there's a piece six on the side, and then piece five is bigger, and then piece six on the side, and then piece five is bigger in the back. So it's cut at an angle, and this kind of gives you that bias cut skirt feel and look. But because I've got this waistband thing here, I needed a shirt that was long enough that I could, let's just get these shoulders matched up. So if her shoulder, yeah, okay. 
Okay. So right here, it looks like it might, just visually, I might have Yeah. Something along those lines. And it won't interfere with the dark area on this, uh, what would then be the left side of this shirt. But I, I may end up having um, to drop this a little bit, which is fine. You know, I may end up making it down to here, this line right here as opposed to this line right here. So this is probably the one that I'll use because it's a, it sits a little bit more on the hip. And as you can see, this is definitely down on that hip area. So this is the waist and this is the hip. And that's kind of what this looks like right here. The second line, waist, hip. So I think that is really what I want to use. And I also just like this pattern. I think it's really nice and I think it is something I can kind of keep in my um, pattern box. So um, let's just see how how difficult. Oh, the other thing I need to point out I'm going to be making this top part out of a solid that is close to this color right here, this turquoisey color. There is a broadcloth that is a perfect match for that. There are actually um, colors of broadcloth in blue that are very similar to almost all of the blue shades in this what I call watercolor fabric but let's let's see um, I'm going to need to purchase two yards it looks like almost all of the larger sizes from size 16 up are two yards of fabric and then for your fusible interfacing for view D you're gonna need um, I think seven eighths of a yard if it's 22 inches wide and if it's 45 inches wide, it's 3 eighths of a yard. And for, for view D, we will need buttons. And we're going to need nine of those for view D. However, we're not going to need nine buttons because we are only going to be buttoning from here to here. So um, my thoughts on that are for all of the accent pieces and what I mean by that is the buttons the collar and possibly the cuffs or if I do a ruffle cuff it will be a different fabric so the main body of the shirt will be the turquoise slash teal slash question mark uh, blue color and the accents will be the this color if I choose to do the ruffle around the bottom of the skirt, it will also be this, so it will look seamless. Okay, so that's that, it's pretty straightforward. So the next little project is a, I really kinda wanna do a hairband for Jessica out of her fabric, but for sure I'm going to make her a, a couple scrunchies. All right guys, so I'm gonna cut one piece of fabric that is three inches, three inches-ish wide. So I'm gonna take my pen and I'm gonna mark three here. And then I'm gonna come down here and mark three. And then when I cut across, I'm just gonna aim for that spot. Okay, so now I'm going to take the end and I'm going to fold it. I think that's usually about a half of an inch. This end, about a half of an inch. And I'm just finger pressing because this piece of fabric was treated with starch, so I'm good. All right, now I am going to fold this like so 
and I want a way to turn this right side out, so I'll probably use a pen, a, a safety pen, because my elastic is going to be free on the inside instead of attached on the inside. Okay, locking those stitches. And I'm gonna be very careful to make sure I get this stitched. Really watching that raw edge right there. Okay, and lock these stitches. Okay. And let me tell you, this is probably about 21 inches. Let's see, we're gonna count. That's a half of an inch. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and a half long. And I did cut it three inches wide. Okay, now I will take this safety pin right here. It's two inch, two inches long. I'm going to put it into my the end, one end of the fabric and turn and just get this tube turned around to the right side. Okay, so there's that, now it'll just flip around, and now I am going to, that needs to be worked on. The reason I'm doing this with this pencil is it's almost like finger pressing. I'm just really pulling tight to get that nice and tight like that. Okay, so if this is 20 and a half inches long, I want, about 10 inches or less of elastic. This elastic does not have a lot of stretch. So let's see. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. I'm going to go nine. Let's see. Ooh, no, I'm going to have to go 10. Yeah, 10 inches. So fully extended elastic, 10 inches long, with just a little bit for attaching it to the to the uh, to itself, essentially. All right, the way that I do this because this is hard to um, attach to a pin, but the way I do it is I set it down on a piece of plastic like this and I take the pointy end of my safety pin and I pop it through the elastic, like so. And then I grab onto this tail and I pull it up until it just allows itself to be impaled, so to speak. All right, and I'll do like that. And I've got my elastic attached to my pin. Okay, now I am going to insert the elastic and push it through the fabric. Now, if I pull this all the way through, then I'm just gonna have to start all over again, right? I'm gonna find my other safety pin right here. That's another two incher. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put it down here on my plastic table. I'm going to impale the elastic. I'm going to lift like so, so that it's attached. And then I'm just going to simply attach it to the fabric like that. Now, when I pull the elastic through, it can't get lost inside this tube of fabric. Okay, so there we have 
the two pieces. They are, here they are, okay. Now, I'll undo this from just the fabric, not the elastic, okay. Same thing with this one. And now I will pull this off this pin and hold it. Pull this off this pin and hold it and then tie this into a knot. And you want to make sure it's a knot that's not going to pull apart when you pull on it. If you need to practice your knot uh, before, before you uh, do this, that's a good idea. Alright, there we go. I'm pulling as hard as I can and it's not coming undone. Alright, I'll just cut off these little points. And I'm going, I am going to slip one of these into the other open end like so. And if you don't want to do the uh, hand stitching around at this point, you don't have to. You can just stick it under your sewing machine and stitch it. However, you will stitch your elastic in place. If you do hand stitching around this, then it's a lot easier, you know, to move the elastic around on the inside. guys so several days have passed since the last time you saw me I was stitching up the little tiny uh, I say tiny it's about half this size scrunchie for Jessica and that was on Sunday through Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday three days ago so today is the 28th of September of 2021 and it's been rainy and cold and windy not that I'm complaining it's just that I've had to deal with a lot of garden issues my plants have fallen over. I've had to go out and kind of clean up some of the mess from the wind and the rain. And so I haven't really had an opportunity to look at the video. And as it turns out, the last part of the video where I was stitching up the join on the little scrunchie, I stopped because I got a phone call and I, and then Jessica came over and I gave it to her. So <laughs> I didn't get to finish. But I had this little project in the works that I haven't given to her yet. And it's more of a hairband. I like it. It's exactly the same uh, method of putting it together, except that it's half as wide. And the, the measurements are 40 inches of fabric that you make into a tube and turn out. And then 21 inches of the corded elastic that you then tie into a knot like we did on the last one and then you just slip stitch these uh, two ends together and you either wear this as a little scrunchy hairband or you can double it up and just wear it as a regular scrunchy like this. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you found inspiration. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not already subscribed, please consider doing so. I would love to have you join us for some more funny little projects like this and this and we don't know, but this. There's always something and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye.